Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the ASICS, uh, which is security misconfiguration on the OWASP Top 10. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, what the uh, misconfiguration issues are. We'll see some examples and we'll also see how you can do uh, during the pen test, how you can find such vulnerabilities. And uh, then we'll see how do we prevent the such issues. So do follow me on Facebook and subscribe to my channel for the regular updates. Let's dive into this one. Uh, as per the OWASP, uh, the security misconfiguration is the most commonly seen issue. Uh, this is uh, commonly a result of insecure default configuration, incomplete or ad hoc configuration, open cloud storage, of course, because cloud has been using a lot uh, lately, uh, misconfigured HTTP headers and verbose error messages containing sensitive information. Not only must all operating systems, frameworks, libraries, and applications be securely configured, but they must be patched, upgraded in a timely fashion. So this definition is not very difficult to understand. It's pretty much straightforward, and, and like you know, it talks about what are the misconfigurations. So anytime you see uh, there is a resource, there is an asset, and if it's not configured securely, that means uh, you have this vulnerability. So. In the simple terms, uh, like you know, uh, we need to uh, let's say we need to discuss then anything you have out of box uh, with the default configuration and you do not change it. So, for example, uh, you got the new iPhone or new phone, and then it does not come with the default passcode or default password, and you skip during the setup and you do not set the password. Now that's a like you know misconfiguration because. Uh, if you have any sensitive data on the phone, uh, your personal uh, data, then you must have the passcode. So that's an example of the misconfiguration. The other example could be, uh, let's say you got a new uh, Wi-Fi modem or router, and it comes with a default user and password, and most sometimes it's like, you know, admin, admin, or whatever. So, and if you do not decide to change it, then anyone who has access to your figure out the IP of the uh, modem can change the configuration, and that's a big security I issue. So that's why uh, such default password has to be changed, and that is fall under uh, the misconfiguration. Now, how do you usually pen test uh, such issues? So that is straightforward. Uh, there is a way. Uh, there are like you know a lot of automated checks you can do. Uh, so for example, let's say you have uh, you're using uh, Akinetics or any other scanner, it can easily find such misconfiguration. Uh, in the old days, uh, I I haven't seen, and the reason I'm say, it, it's telling like you know old days because recently I haven't seen this vulnerability such as like directory browsing or listing. So when you go to the application uh, domain like the main path, and then you can see list of directories on the web server. Now that's not lately been there, but those sort of vulnerabilities can easily be caught by the scanners. Things like, you know, uh, you do not have secure flag on, you do not have HTTP only flag on. Um, uh, things like, uh, let's say, uh, during the scanning, it found some 500 error messages, which gives you a lot of internal error information or gives you some, uh, like, you know, hard-coded passwords. So those are, are like, you know, uh, existing uh, automated checks and that can easily be found with uh, automated scanners. You can also use the burp passive scan. So of course burp has an active scanner as well, but let's say if you uh, not intend to actively scan the website, you, do, you don't have permission to generate a lot of traffic, you can still find such issues with a passive scan where it will uh, check all the responses, all the requests of the applications, and it will scan through the response. And if there is any any misconfiguration, for example, non-compliant TLS or weak user and password or do not have TLS and have some hard-coded password, all of these things can easily be uncovered by Burp, uh, like, you know, doing the passive scan. So these are the uh, easily you can do that. Also, you need to keep an eye while you're doing the manual testing, just while you're reading through the request response. Let's say you're doing the API fuzzing, right? You just make sure you look look out for these items and, and, and make sure uh, you note, note down uh, while you're doing the pen test. Now, um, uh, one of the uh, other example, uh, of course, because we are so uh, cloud-oriented, is the open S3 bucket. So here, uh, let's say you are using AWS and you have the S3 where you are storing all the data, and this S3 
you do not have like you know you should have blocked the public access because only allowed to write is by other internal component let's say a lambda but you do not do that and and that's why that's a that's a big misconfiguration where you did, you forgot to uh, restrict the access on the bucket uh, the other example is the unencrypted database uh, suppose uh, you have uh, you're using DynamoDB or any other MySQL or database, and then you do not encrypt. Uh, most of the cloud providers, Azure, uh, Google, GCP, Cloud Platform, or, or AWS provides easy way to uh, just a checkbox uh, for the server-side encryption, and if you're not doing that, that's a uh, misconfiguration. Uh, default admin credentials. Uh, we already discussed about the example when you have a new modem and you do not change your conf uh, credentials and said like keep it to ad admin admin uh, that's a that's a big vulnerability then you have unnecessary ports and services open uh, let's say you spin up an ec2 instance and <clears throat> uh, you do not uh, block other unrequired ports like you have let's say rdp port open you have telnet or ssh <clears throat> which are not required then uh, those also fall under the uh, misconfiguration then you have verbose error messages and version information. So we already talked about verbose error messages. So when you are interacting with the API, it gives you 500. Well, let's say when you're doing some fuzzing, you provided bad, bad payload, and then now you got uh, backend exception messages. Now you can figure out what the application backend language is, and then uh, attacker can f perform more targeted attacks. And the other is server version information. So uh, while the testing I, I saw an header and which it says IIS 6.0 or 8.0 or 10.0 that means it's using the IIS uh, uh, or Apache or Nginx or, or whatever the uh, backend server is and based on that I can I can look for public CVEs and public exploits I can use that to exploit the system and the last one is uh, security headers like CSP cores HSTS uh, these are like you know, very basic, but provides defense in depth. Uh, don't don't worry if you are if you don't know uh, what this headers and how it actually works. What protection does it provide? I'll have it plan it cover into the next week session. So uh, again, do follow me on Facebook and YouTube so you can get my weekly episodes. Okay, now let's go on to how do you prevent such attacks? Uh, uh, of course, the most uh, easiest thing to do like you know opposite of all the examples that we saw is harden the systems like if you had a new phone you put the passcode if you have a new Wi-Fi modem change the password if you have like you know a new AC2 instance you change the ports or security group change the ports and again uh, you always use different credentials for QA prod and dev and then uh, use the automated process such as CloudFront uh, this provides uh, cloud formation, so this provides like you know easy way to deploy consistent across all the environment with the same security practices. Uh, other one uh, is the patch and update software. Uh, of course, like you know, uh, if you have let's say Microsoft OS or Apple OS, it provides the updates like vendor updates. So you subscribe to that vendor updates, and every time there is a new security release. You make sure you apply them. If you don't apply them, of course, uh, any vulnerability which was exposed to your current version can be exploited by any attacker. There is also a good uh, database uh, by National Vulnerability Database, uh, NVDB, and NIST. So do subscribe there. Uh, they also provide decent information. And this is also good as a, as a security best practices. So if you're a security consultant working for a company, make sure you do uh, like you know you do subscribe to this database and then you can always prioritize the patches and implement for their impact so if uh, I'm not recommending to apply the update directly into the prod because that could have an adverse effect on to the customer on the product environment so rather you can uh, test it out on the dev and and see what the impact is uh, like what sort of vulnerability does it resolve and then you apply once you test it out then you apply to the prod uh, last one, but this is very effective integration test. Uh, the security is not like you know one-time thing. So once you do it, for example, let's say you build the security, 
uh, you refueled it, you passed it, and now you're pushed into production. Now, after it's, it's in production, on the dev environment, there are several feature updates and, and like a lot of things, noise going around. And sometimes, uh, intentionally or unintentionally, a developer could disable some of the security configuration. And that could result a misconfiguration on the prod uh, when when that gets pushed out. That's why you should have the integration test. So that that's like continuous monitoring of your of your security. So if any of the test cases fail, that means you have uh, you have not met the security bar, or it's not meeting the same security requirement which was passed under the production previously. So make sure you have the integration test. Uh, and you verify the effectiveness of the uh, configuration and settings that you had done uh, when you reviewed this configuration previously. Uh, so that is that is all I wanted to cover. Uh, let me know what other prevention techniques that you have used or recommend in the comment section below. Also, let me know uh, what other uh, like you know topics you want me to cover. As well as uh, please hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe to my channel and do follow me on Facebook. Uh, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.